Good morning. I'm Aya Wimala, and today is Thursday, June the 3rd. And beautiful day here. I hope you're <clears throat> having good weather wherever you are and good news. Um, the news is, is the, the world news is not so good. Now there's a very serious problem in Sri Lanka. I think it's an oil spill. I've just been listening to it. Uh, so when we when you practice, please add a, a good thought for everyone in Sri Lanka. Um, there have been discoveries of the of the deaths and bodies of at least 250 Canadians uh, in the boarding in now deserted boarding schools that were set up uh, in Canada over a hundred years ago for indigenous people. So we're the world is the world is uh, samsara is always going to be a crazy place, and it'll have all the excitement and joys we can possibly imagine, and all of the sadness and uh, suffering we can imagine. So that's the nature of it. So we can we can send our good thoughts. We can help out ways that we can, and uh, occasionally we need to step away from that news if it's really bothering us, and take a uh, maybe a fast or maybe do intermittent fasting from the news and just be aware of how it affects you. If we're just listening to it and hearing it over and over again and just we can be witnesses to that, but a lot of times it's really good to find a way to help. And that may mean, that may be a way to find help closer at home for us. So if we're concerned about hunger in the world, we can start by helping uh, feed the hungry here in this this country. We don't have to go far from home, and helping those who who we may even know who need help. So remember that the that uh, our compassion is something that we can when we feel that deep compassion for the suffering of others. I think we always need to look and see, is there something we can do? Is there a way we can help that person? If we were that person suffering, what would help us? What would we want from others? And uh, we try to do that, but when we can't, we have to be careful of our own, uh, we don't want our own emotional state to become so unproductive or so, just caught up in the suffering and the tragedy of it that we become, uh, you know, part of the problem. So if there's a way to help, find a way to help and do it, whatever you're moved to do. Uh, often it might mean helping to change things, change laws, or uh, uh, we may have to fight the fight that takes a long time where we won't see tangible results maybe even in our lifetime, but there are ways to start looking deeper into the problems that we see and find groups who are working to, to change things, but realizing it can be a slow, long haul. But uh, we don't want our compassion to overwhelm us so we become non uh non-productive in terms of our own lives and our own taking care of what we can take care of. So, I found, this is a beautiful essay um, I'd like to read. It's a very short one from The Issue at Hand by Gil Fronsdale. And it just, these it, they just keep seeming to be just perfect for uh, what how we how we are in the world. So the verse he uses is from the Dhammapada. It's the 
It's verse 40, 49 from the Dhammapada. As a bee gathers nectar and moves on without harming the flower, its color, or its fragrance, just so should a sage move through a village. Yeah, we're always, you know, our very, the very first precept, the one that makes all the difference in the world, is to do no harm. So this is called being a naturalist. In mindfulness meditation, we learn to be present for things as they are. In doing so, it can be useful to assume the attitude of a naturalist. A naturalist simply observes nature without interfering or imposing his or her views. If a wolf eats a deer, a naturalist watches without judgment. If a plant produces a, stunning, be a stunningly beautiful blossom, a naturalist leaves it alone. Not succumbing to the the desire to take it home. In meditation, we observe ourselves much as a naturalist observes nature without repressing, denying, grasping, or defending anything. This means that we observe our life with a non-interfering presence. So this means that we observe our life, <laughs> the one we think is ours, right? Mine, me. This is who I am. We observe our life with a non-interfering presence. We can see our anger, depression, fear, happiness, joy, pain, and pleasure directly as they are without complications. The naturalist perspective is one of respect for what is observed. The word respect is a nice synonym for mindfulness practice, because it literally means to look again. Often we complicate our observation of ourselves by taking things personally. Of course, we can't deny that our sorrows and joys, challenges and blessings, emotions and thoughts are happening to us but when we take them personally, we let ourselves be defined by them. The presence of anger means I am an angry person. A generous act takes, taken personally is proof that I am a generous person. While the common tendency of taking things personally may seem innocent, it often unnecessarily complicates your relation, our our relationship with what is happening. We can easily become muddled in confusion regarding such issues as personal identity, image, and expectation. From the naturalist perspective, one does not see my anger or my generosity. Rather, they are simply observed as the anger or the impulse of generosity. Such a switch of perspective can be particularly helpful with physical pain. When taken personally, my pain can easily lead to burdensome feelings of responsibility and entanglement. When we see it as the pain, it tends to be easier for us to remain disentangled and lighter. Another way we complement our lives is by assigning values of good and bad to our experience. For a naturalist, there is no good or bad. The natural world just unfolds. During mindfulness meditation, we do not need to judge our experience as either good or bad. We simply watch how things are and how they unfold. By cultivating a naturalist perspective during meditation, it is possible to develop a capacity to be non-reactive. From this non-reactive perspective, we can more easily explore how to respond wisely to whatever circumstances we find ourselves in. Once we have seen clearly 
there may well be a need for action or involvement. For example, a naturalist may decide to remove a non-native plant from a delicate ecosystem. Likewise, through non-reactivity, witnessing our anger or greed, we may decide to uproot them. Because of our wonderful powers of observation and reflection, human beings can be both observer and observed. We can be both the naturalist and the nature. We are nature seeing itself. Through our capacity to see clearly, we can be nature freeing itself. I just love that. I just love that essay. There's another one on nature, but I'll save that for a different day. Um, that's... This morning I was reading a, a essay by Matthew Fox on his daily meditations that I get. And... Uh, I think it's it's on a very similar it's on a very similar thing. So uh, I'll I will print that out and may read that to you because it's so beautiful and it's and it's just so clear about the connection. So we are part of nature. We are nature. So we're not we're not we are connected to all of this. We are all our individual selves and we are all the same we are all connected and the other thing I was listening to just uh, this morning is about the uh, uh, sent they're going they're sending thousands and thousands of earthworms up into space to be studied and uh, the reason they're using earthworms I mean it's it's a it's a living being, but it's genetic makeup, and a lot of its, uh, its, its biology is so similar to that of ours that they can use it to study the effects of uh, space, living in space and space travel. Uh, how it affects the earthworms may help them unlock some of the problems, unlock the mystery of what happens to our bodies when we're in that uh, you know, no gravitational pull or maybe a different gravitational pull and work with ways to deal with the human living in space or traveling in space. Uh, and they're using earthworms. And so we certainly seem to take earthworms for granted, right? And it's wonderful to see that's that's scientists, it's not wonderful to think of all the earthworms that are being sacrificed for this science uh, project, but that they're, that they're seeing the connection between the earthworms and us, and it's such a strong one that it's going to help scientists unlock some of the problems that we've uh, dealt with with space travel. So, Remember that little earthworm. Remember that earthworm is a, uh, one of our connections with all living things. And we often see earthworms, you know, the birds are eating the earthworms and that's just like uh, nat the naturalist watching a wolf eat a deer. This is part of the cycle of nature. It's uh, enjoying watching the squirrels and the birds so much now. You know, I have to remind myself sometimes that when we see a, a predator bird uh, kill a, another creature, a little animal or a rodent, um, we have to recognize that that's part of that's part of this life cycle too. So, um, I think these are beautiful lessons for us. Just become an observer. That naturalist is that observer. And that's how we can become in our own meditation. So last night I had the uh, the great fortune to to uh, be able to teach at Blue Lotus, and it was the first evening that nothing was being recorded. It's not on Zoom, not on Facebook Live. The temple is back. 
I was tell there were, there were several new people there last night, and uh, I, I was re reminding everyone that the temple is back looking like it did 15 months ago before we shut down. And then when we did reopen, it was with uh, most of the seats in the Dhamma Hall and all of the cushion. Some of the, a few of the cushions were out, but those were all put away, and there were the you know, just some chairs with, we've reached the limit at about 20 chairs and a few cushions and they were spread over the big Dhamma Hall and it, so it had a totally different uh, appearance, kind of like a recording studio or, and uh, with chairs for people to sit in and so much uh, Zoom and lots of work with the, uh, getting the sound and everything to work with people on Zoom and people in the temple or sometimes on Zoom without and or Facebook without anyone in the temple. So over the last 15 years we've seen we've seen everything. And so last night it was all back. It looked like we'd walked back into 15 months ago. So that it was very interesting and um, it was it was lovely. It was lovely to have people there, and it was lovely to have new people there. So, it's a lot of change. <laughs> it seems like this going back to, the, this going back, of course we're, well, people don't have to sign up to go to the temple. The only thing we'll continue doing on Zoom will be the Saturday meditations, and most of the teachers uh, are being invited by Zoom, and so uh, that's we'll keep doing that. So you won't be missing everything. You'll still you, Monday and Wednesday won't be on Zoom, but uh, Saturdays will be. So you can get tickets for that, but you can come to the temple uh, Monday and Wednesday. So why don't we sit and let this conversation about being a naturalist being that observer, letting go of so much of the, uh, taking everything so personal like we humans tend to do. Um, that helps us let go of kind of hanging on to judgment and criticism of ourselves mostly. But if we're, if we're judging ourselves and criticizing ourselves, we know that we're we're doing it to others as well. So when we can be an observer and um, that can help us clear up so much of the, the baggage that we carry around is often from things that have happened in the past or things that because of a pa certain past situation we're worried about in the future. So all of those are things that we're, it would be so helpful if we could observe what's going on within us and then be able just in that process of, of observing it to let it go that's usually the easiest way just keep watching it and keep seeing is what you're observing something that's happening right at this moment or is it connected to something that's kind of old that we've kept that we can let go of so why don't we sit and in your practice, uh, try to always remember the people in Sri Lanka now going through another environmental crisis. And uh, that's if it affects, you know, they're a little they're a little island, so anything that's affecting their coastlines is uh, is huge for them. So. Think of the ones you know there, and we all know monks there, and if you've traveled there, we, we, we know people that we've met, and um, have a, we have a personal connection with the people there, so send your good thoughts into the people in India, to, to people all over the world. Uh, there isn't a place where we can't send our loving kindness and our good thoughts. So we have a little time, let's practice together. So just find that comfortable posture.
You can practice with your eyes open if you feel that's not too distracting or close your eyes, which is primarily what we do in our, our particular practice. And we do that just to allow there to be fewer distractions. It just helps us with our, with our other observations of things coming to us through our senses. Feel your spine lifted up. And then your body can relax around that spine. And it can support us comfortably. Let's just to stay with the breath. Be aware of each breath in and each breath out. With each breath, feel yourself being more present in the body. Be aware of sounds. Be aware of the contact your body makes with whatever you're seated on or wherever you're standing or walking. contact of your clothes, touching your skin. Be aware of any smells. You may be aware of the taste or feeling in your mouth. Maybe it feels dry. Maybe there's a taste of tea or coffee. see your thoughts moving through your mind but right now we don't need to feed them with our attention so just be aware of the thoughts let them rise and then just let them fall away just like our breath breathing in we can't hold our breath Then we breathe out. Then even with our thoughts, there's that arising, and then there's the passing away. May I be well.
content and peaceful. May all human beings, all animals, all creatures all beings invisible to us and all living beings, sentient beings, human and non-human throughout the universe. Be free from suffering and its causes. Be free from fear and worry and anxiety. Free from hunger free from thirst, and may all beings in the universe live in peace. May everything you do today, everything that all of us do today be done, not only for the benefit of ourselves, but for the benefit of all other beings. So I'm thinking there's going to start being a great deal of noise up on the roof of my building. So I'm going to finish here. Go ahead and practice if you can a little bit longer. Thank you. I'll see you. I'll, you'll see me hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye.